Give us some backstory on Irish Madness. So Irish Madness is an Irish netherrealm player that we we first started seeing uh, competitive results from him in Mortal Kombat X. He was kind of the, the real premier stunt double Johnny Cage player. It, it, it was him and DJ Holmes or Homies. Um, they they were kind of the only real two stunt double players really in the world when it came to Johnny Cage. And as always, uh, as you know, with, with the majority of the community, when Injustice 2 came out, made the transition over, and uh, Irish Manus definitely hasn't had the same level of success in Injustice, but he is definitely a strong player and has been sticking with Atrocitus for basically the whole game's life. I believe he plays Atrocitus and Captain Cold um, for you know, matchup purposes here and there, but he's always had a really, I suppose, entertaining way to play the game. I suppose generally, right? And that really caters to Atrocitus quite well. Um, is a really tidy player, is very strong, and I'm sure we'll see more of. The one when, when fingers crossed the season two. Yeah, the one thing we, we haven't heard anything about season two, we don't know if it's happening, but everyone is kind of assuming there will be one, and if there is, I have no doubt we'll see a lot more Irish Mantis. Of course. So the, the, the thing about Irish Mantis is that uh, he's always been a, one of the Atrocitus players that plays heavily on his mids and his neutral and his pressure, rather than uh, the straight up 50 50. I know as the, the game has progressed and as time has moved on, we have um, pretty much every Atrocitus now is playing him to that next level of what Atrocitus can do. But early on, Irish Mantis was one of those players that really, you know, um, relished that early on. Omega K, I mean, you all know Omega by now, right? You know, for, for the longest time, he was like the gorilla god of Gorilla Grod, a tech monster for days. What let Omega down in competitive was his tournament nerves, his execution on stream. Like, he's got so many setups, he has so much mix-up potential, and his Grod execution is really, really superb, not to put him on the spot, obviously. But it's always been his uh, his execution in tournament that's let him down, plus also matchups. Uh, whenever he's played Grod in tournament, he's lost to Supergirl and Batman, who I are think, by think... far... Grod's two hardest matchups. I actually think he's lost to Supergirl and Batman in every tournament he's ever played, and they are two matchups that bury Grod, which is unfortunate. But that, that's part of being a character specialist, right? You know, you need to be able to deal with those hard matchups. And looks like he's been bringing to the table as nude as the game will allow Grod. Oh yeah, Omega has this thing where he's got a costume he calls Nude Grod, which is as little armor as possible to make him just look like. Just a gorilla, really? Just a big gorilla. Just a big gorilla that does telekinesis. Right, so this is going to be another first to ten, guys. Strap yourselves in. We might have another long Begin. one up ahead, but we don't know. Oh, starting off with a forward dash, though. Mega K, not messing around. Now, gets the first hit already. This is what you aren't allowed to challenge. He goes in for the reset attempt. Rod with those buffs now, and there's the jump in. You know, he's probably expecting a back dash of sorts, but... The instant jump. This is quite a weird matchup, you know, because Grod can, uh, he's got some decent ways of actually laying the pressure on against Atrocitus. However, he's got to be careful, just like anyone else, the second deck star comes into play. Wall tries to disrespect the wake up though, and that's going to get chewed up for free. Back to the wall. Doesn't have the cat to extend the damage at all, so he's just going to take the knockdown. I can only assume he maybe I'd try, try to press the button there and wake up. But one thing about Grod, which also needs to be respected, is his wake up charge. It's a really, really good wake up attack. I like the way uh, Omega's using that leap just to try and get around that that, that breath on, on a prediction. But he's gonna have that cat soon. Oof, that's gonna be a nice big hit, Omega. Ooh, tries to go for the cross up. Nice backdash from Marish Manis. Yeah, he's gotta watch out for these uh, leaps though, because if he misses too many of these, then Atrocitus, he's gonna whiff punish you all day with back two. Those leaps, he's really trying to catch Mantis uh, calling Dexter on the neutral. Because if he leaps right as he does it, that is going to be a free combo and use up a lot of that Dexter time. But Mantis being patient, not giving it to him for free. So one thing to immediately point out, um, Stampede cancels are actually very hard to do. Um, but they are one of the things that Omega K is really sort of prided on, is his execution on those uh, Stampedes. Because they are super plus on block, but the execution to get them down without doing the charge is very, very tight. Oh, and there's that down too. Okay, landing in front. That's going to be an easy anti-air. Right now, Omega's struggled to open up Madness so far. And this really has been putting on the most pressure so far. And then again, just, just catching out that meter burn back three. Going Patience for, showing yeah. through. He's going for a little bit of a Hail Mary right there. I mean, I think at this health, uh, meter burn back three with Grod does land so much damage. And not just damage outright, but into potential damage. He's probably going to go for these like really risky, just why not do it situations. But to be honest, Madness right now looking really strong. Unlikely uh, Omega's probably going to win this first game. I think Madness is probably going to take this one quite comfortably. There's that jump through. I think he expected Madness to maybe try and challenge the anti there, but he's going to get hit because he was crouching, splattered on the ground immediately, and a very strong first game to Madness. Now, good game number one, to be honest. I think Madness, he's done uh, a good job, essentially, of just... They're both going to know this matchup, first of all. Uh, but at the same time, Madness, 
good use of extra strings. You know, I think I believe it's a back one two. Oh, no, forward one two, I believe. Uh, the, the forward one backhand into overhead slap. You actually very rarely even see that string used uh, by Trossett's players. It's quite popular with the cat is out because it has elements of a mix up between the overhead and the low puddle. Um, and obviously the the cat being out makes it significantly safer or less easy to punish, I suppose. All right, he's not messing around. He's put the armor on. It's time. Now that's the projectile immunity. Does make him completely immune to Dexter. And there's the cancel. Again, two of them, two for two stampedes. Going for the secret sweep. Maybe trying to catch a backdash, but he's going to meet burn this into full combo. Here we go. Here comes the monkey business. There's the restand. Oof, into the secret sweep. Oh, that was a wonderful convert from yeah. Mattis. That was super clean. And he's going to get a full combo on this as well. Guaranteed deck stuff. Cat activation as well. Push block from Mega, but dashes into the shield. The cat is now gone. Bar's used up. Challenging with that down one too. Oof. I don't think he was expecting the jump at the same time. He was probably expecting some kind of cross-up of sorts, but... Oh, the challenge on the meter burn back three. This could even be the round. Oh, that was sick. But the throw tech. I'm actually really surprised Mantis tech that grab. In what world would you tech a grab in that situation? That could have been chip territory. I'm actually surprised that maybe even went for it. We're going to spend a bar on that armored charge to get out. This is just amazing defense from Mantis so far. That was the tight jump three into back two, into run cancel, into jump two cross up. That was despicable. I've actually not seen that before too. So still expanding on these options. There's that meter burn breath. But that, that, that straight breath is gonna pretty much shut down that grounded neutral and wow, buffering into puddle just in case Grodd overextended. And he did just that. And there we go, popping the siphon too. I, I, I love the optimization from Madness. They're really using the board, you know, really using all the tools in the box. Oh, I did actually forget to update the point. Let me quickly give Mantis a game. It might need to be two at this rate. Oof! I guess getting hit, they're going to be forced to clash. We can get some guaranteed life back here, but do we think Mantis is going to try and stop some of that regen? No, he isn't. And that's going to be three spent. Optimal life regen for Mega. Still has a bar stocked as well if he needs it. I love the range that Mantis is actually sort of like enforcing himself. He's putting it at a range where Grodd can't really go in for his trait. And the trait is what is going to help him in this matchup. You know, getting around the shield, getting around Dexter. He needs to make sure he's popping that immunity. Here comes the blood drain. Push blocking does remove it, but oh, that was clean. And that's a 2-0 for Mantis. Yeah, he's looking good. It looks like it's been quite hard for Omega to really get that trait out in the neutral. Because if, if you happen to trait right as... It's, it's one of those, you know, I think you think kind of situations where... If he goes for the, the trait call right as Magnus goes for a puddle, we might even be able to react to you know, the trait with the puddle. But if he goes for a puddle on prediction of a trait and Omega leaps, he's going to leap right at a puddle, which is why Magnus is going for those, I suppose, safer breath options instead. Because he's keeping himself safe. If Omega does manage to get the trait activated, he's not going to get as much mileage out of it from full screen. It's when he lands that hit. You know, you can really do a lot of damage. Begin. That sweep taking the first bar. And that's going to be a, a good start for Omega. Gone back to the armorless. It was slowing him down. It was being encumbered. And now he's able to fly around the screen like nobody's business. Expecting the throw tech. That's actually uh, some of the tech. And there's the meter burn just in case he does the breath. Omega, he's had a good start so far. Like ben, Oh, tries to stand up. But that's going to be a full combo. Omega's going to hit that down. Ooh. Another full combo. That's going to be a very convincing round. And to be honest, it's kind of weird that Omega is opting not to... End his combos. I can only assume there he wanted to keep him in the corner and the combo would yeah. have pushed him too far out. No, definitely. Also, uh, Madness didn't have enough health to actually take the grab. So obviously it does that 2% oh! like, and that's going to be a read on the puddle. Could have been more damage, but he at least still has Madness there. Push block. Oh, and the breath, but he recovers in time. Yeah, he was not expecting that down two to get beat by the jump three, so he's not committing, but catches him with the deck star. Full combo incoming. And that is why Madness has been really careful going for these cat calls, because all it takes is one, and that's 400 life gone, just like that. And the trait has already disappeared. If you get hit by a grod combo when you've got a trait that has a set amount of time, you ain't gonna have much of it left when he's finished. Yep, I mean, if you activate trait as he grod jumps in, you're probably gonna have about a quarter of it left by the time the combo is done, if you're lucky. Oh, he tries to add, yeah, but he just gets slapped by a big gorilla fist. Oh, yeah, even earlier of a down two, just to make sure the jump three doesn't connect. This is quite a demand for Mantis to get this work done, but... Oh, back-to-back -back charges. Spending both of those bars, he has such a life advantage. You can afford, I mean, you build bar by being hit. I don't think Omega's actually going to mind if he gets opened up here. But I think that's actually why we're seeing so many of those secret sweeps, because he's trying to go under breath. 
Yeah, but also, I mean, it, that it, would it, go on the punch float too. It, it's working, you know, it does go over some of those neutral options. Not that you're really going to go for the punch float in the neutral, but the, the breath, absolutely. We're already seeing Mantis do that a ton. And that's going to be the first game on the board for Omega. Two to one now. I mean, Irish Mantis, he's still looking good. I think it's just Omega's being a little bit more tricky in his approaches now. He's being a little bit predictable at the start, and Mantis was kind of effortlessly able to react and deal with it, but now it's being a little bit hard to react, and Omega's being a bit more unpredictable. I think in the first to ten, it's plenty of time for you to kind of make those adjust like, adjustments. Um, the thing about Omega 2, which I, I forgot to mention at the beginning, is he's not actually been playing Injustice as much as other people recently. Um, as of very recently, he's not really been playing a huge amount, so it's, well, think, it's nice that the first ten has given him the opportunity to actually come out and start playing again. I think a lot of players been doing that though you know where where there, there's there, there has been a gap in between the end of season one of competition and you know waiting for oh the, that was such an insane block because that is a three-way vortex that was actually really good defense but irish Mantis has always been known for good defense so not a surprise at all to see him be ready for that definitely that he was expecting the down one into a uh, puddle there that's what the back three was for you see him bu uh, buffering that back input looking for that charge reaction punish <laughs> you know what pressing buttons out of that sandy cancel was really risky very brave that he went for it now normally you you don't interrupt the cancel, you interrupt the string, because a lot of Gorilla God's, uh, Gorilla God's strings have bi like, big gaps in them. So normally you won't interrupt the cancel, you'll interrupt the string that he cancels into. Oh, and there's that throw. Come on, Reed. It's going to put Archmanis in that corner. Doesn't wake up with the punch float. Going for the safe approach in the forward 2-2. Two -two. Nice! That's a good read on the backdash, actually. But he's still going to get a nice amount of damage. What if he's going to deck star off this? Ooh, but he expects the backdash! No, the armor break! I was just like, but actually, he's still able to get the throw anyway. I think I'm recovering quite well. There's that meaty attempt, that standing three. Oh, tries to fake out, and that gives him a free cat activation. But now he can't use anything because he's immune. The second Omega catches sight of him having enough range, the second he realizes he has enough distance to just chew through it, it doesn't matter what Atrocitus goes for. There's, he pops the uh, projectile immunity before it runs out. Oh, lads behind. Wow! Might actually touch him in time. Oh, well, Ned, you see, that's what I mean. He's trying to interrupt the gap in between 2 2. Full combo. Here comes Omega. Oh, tries to get the down one for the easier confirm. I only just missed it. I don't think he expected that one to hit at all. He'd already committed into the other string. Man is getting hit at times that Omega is not ready for. Still salvages it with a nice amount of damage. Oh, long distance punch float because he has the cat to make it safe. That secret sweep, maybe trying to catch a backdash. Yeah, it's because it'll catch a backdash, it'll catch wake up breath, it'll catch wake up punch float. All oh, that big cross up block for Mantis, very late, very ambiguous. Omega, he's just, he's not gonna overextend right here, right? You know, he has no reason to go for a leap to get out the edge. Right now, maybe he'll get out the corner. Does he no, that, that, that was definitely to reposition, he wasn't looking to hit there. He just wants to get out of that corner. There we go. Ops not to uh, push block either, doesn't want to spend his only bar. And Mantis now has the cat and three sticks. Oof, that's to be a big hit there. I quite like that delayed meter man too. He was looking to see if it connected or not, and now he's going to get next up. Oh, we'll go straight through with the armor. So many hits of armor on that special. Oh, doesn't hit. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's going to use it for the, the block pressure instead. Oh, wow, he just surprised. gets hit. Surprised to see him actually eat that one. No, he can't opt to clash either. Oh, wait what? a minute, that crossed up. That was a dis- Oh, he has to clash. That was such a strange occurrence! I mean, they might be able to tie out here. Yes, they will. I love that. Wait for the puddle. Use the negative frames to now enforce the projectile immunity. He's just stampeding. Oh, and there's a good sweep! He is just running at him, flinging his arms around Literally, until he waited for something to stick. <laughs> just run in there and slap him in the legs. And then you'll win. You're know, hand loading. It's just giving a little bit. Ha! <laughs> well. I gotta say, the, the, um, the adjustments that Omega K's been making here, first of all, is he's not being anywhere near as predictable on his general approach. You know, he's not going in for those full screen leaps. He's making sure uh, Mantis is negative first, and then he's going in for the character power into trade. But when it comes to um, fighting Grodd, though, and Grodd, if he has a trade that can get around yours, right? If it's. If, he's, if, if his trade gets around how your character approaches a matchup. The matchup with Grodd becomes about make sure you're really capitalizing on when his trait is not available. But I think so many matchups in the game, especially the popular characters, Grodd actually does a surprisingly good job at countering them when he has his trait activated. And Grodd has a nice amount of ways to get it, you know, thanks to the most recent buff where, you know, it starts a lot faster. That has been a big help for him in a lot of these matchups where normally he'd trade or just straight up wouldn't be able to get into it at all. 
Oh, well, he was going for some block pressure there, but Matt yeah. just getting over I think he might have tried to interrupt the gap between the uh, second and third hits of 1-1-2. But the thing is that this is what happens when you get caught trying to go for the trait, you know, immunity. You know, the second it doesn't go well, you lose half-life. And there's that clean cross-up. Full combo, he's going to even out this damage quite nicely. Goes for the knockdown. I actually think he, he likes the option of baiting that wake up. I think, yeah, he's going to go for the run cancel, maybe for setup, but if he doesn't even get it, he's, he was going to end the combo there anyway, and at least he's still pressing the advantage. It's almost like the gift that keeps on giving, that setup. And there's that push block. And I like it, a push block just to make sure he can get the cat out for, uh, safely, but does it maximize off the puddle? Ooh, I love it. That's be a big hit. Oh, but no, drops the combo again. A lot of damage being left on the table by Mantis. Oh, big whiff punish too. That is going to hurt. Going to spend the bar. Yes, he is. Big punch. That's going to be a restand. Is he going to cash out? No, oh, oh the like delay! The sh almost like a shimmy that wasn't a shimmy. It, it definitely was. He, he he was calling out that throw. That walk forward made Mantis think he was going to go for a throw to finish off the life bar. Because it wouldn't be the first time he's done that. Yeah, he's definitely expecting a back dash. That's what the forward dash is for. Oh, can't add Eric because that jump three. The big angry monkey with the big feet. He has to watch out now, though. Oh, no. That's going to give him some nice plus frames. Barrel doesn't quite connect. Jumps over the puddle, but isn't oh. close enough to get a full combo. And that's not a trade that Mantis is going to be happy with. But yeah. We'll manage to salvage it with a punch float. Punish on that stampede. I have a fever and haven't played in a week. I can only, only relate there, my friend. I myself are recovering from flu and feel terrible. But, I mean, look at this um, clash situation. Man, is going to get the guaranteed health back. Omega kind of needs that extra bar. No, he definitely can't afford to spend it there. Oh, but no, get caught in by the puddle in the neutral. That's not what you want. Oh, but no, he messes up the combo. Oh, but gets hit by another puddle. Omega really needs to start watching out for those. Yeah, it's one of those crazy things where if you sit there and just wait for the puddle for too long, you're essentially just going to allow Atrocious to have free reign over the stage. But at the same time, Omega, he's not necessarily getting caught just not blocking low. He's just getting caught pressing something at that moment you know he's trying to press a button he's trying to sort of just get something going and right as he does something that's when the puddle comes out nice block from Mantis yeah, Mantis blocks having on point catches the back dash punishes it clean and that's gonna be a full combo goes from the trait into the restand as well catches the secret sweep and that's oh, gonna be a full screen combo vortex oh the cross up here we go again oh what's the mix up he goes for the block pressure but Mantis gets opened up the back dash is caught and that's a oh the chase down as well he commits to meet him and charge oh. to follow through with the air escape I'm like, okay taking him to gorilla city and back again not gorilla letting him survive run. at all beautiful demonstration i think really of what of, of what the grod trait can give you that is a legitimate vortex and if you have the execution and the know-how you can make any game a complete turnaround Gorilla Grodd is one of my absolute favorite characters in this game to watch. And the thing is, it's 100% because of the Mega Cave. You know, but Mantis, I feel like he's really approaching Atrocitus in quite a smart manner here. Um, it's just certain instances where, you know, he, he's making the right call to at, yeah, you know, these leaps to make sure Grodd can't just get in there. But at the same time, it's risky because that jump three is such a dangerous jump in. Thank you very much for the 14 month restub, Sarlin Senpai. Welcome back. Hopefully you're enjoying the first attempt. Oof, had down two. I actually don't know if Grodd's down two is punishable or what. Even if it is, Mantis has had a hard time getting it so far. Oh, commits that back one straight into the background bounce. That would have been huge damage, but was it meant to be? Oh, oh the cat saving the day. Dexter literally. Master, let me save you. Yes, Master. Oh, blocking the stampede. Oh, Mantis is going to need to start punishing that stampede on block. Like, I, I know the meter burn one is plus, but that's oh. not what he's going for. And that's going to be a big setup. Ooh, oh, that trickiness. <laughs> that disgusting. That trickiness. I will never get tired of watching Grodd set up. Oh, underneath Ooh. the bed. I'm not tired yet. You go to bed. Oh, put him to sleep forever. Oh, and there's that stampede oh. just keeping himself safe. But it did use a lot of bar, but look at that health advantage that Omega has now. He gets caught by the puddle, but well, the fact he's only got two bars to work with, that's half his resources down. He's going to build a little bit, but there's the punish, yeah. I love that. I love that call out. You know, you want to punish the, the lift, but that shield just pops up. He says, no, you will not. On that interrupt again. Omega, ooh, goes down one into the background bounce, but Mantis tried to go with a counter poke throw, and that will get chewed up. And that's that big punch putting him to the corner. And there we go. That's a huge clash for Madness, because not only is it going to put Rod out of his trait, it's going to put that entire cooldown from the start. And it's going to be a long time before he gets that back. I actually quite like the empty leap, you know. Actually, maybe try and make that anti-air whiff. 
If he's going to press a button, he sticks out a limb, and there's the whiff punish attempt. Gets hit by the final hit of that forward 2 2 3, but he's not going to get a huge amount of damage, but he's still going to maintain that momentum. Le leaps himself straight into the corner, though. That was definitely a mistake. Mega K is going to get fully punished. It's going to access to his clash, though. He's going to have that, I suppose, get out of jail card if he does get opened up again, but Madness is here to make this one work. Oh, getting a lot out of his. Can he actually come with this? No, he yeah, took that away. I wasn't yeah. sure. I wasn't, <laughs> Not anymore. I wasn't anymore. sure if they just made it scale heavy, but no, they definitely just straight up removed that. If that was day one, that would have been 500 damage. Oh, <laughs> Madness! No ability to. Uh oh. Clash! Oh, Ooh. the the loops! Oh, in front this time, but Madness still blocked in front. You know, I think that block in front was a super crucial decision. It worked out, though. Oh, Ooh. the jump! Uh -oh. Right over the puddle! He's got a flip out, but he's not going to give him the chance to use it. Oh, he goes for the stampede, and that is going to be the game. Omega taking him from the left corner to mid-screen and beyond. That is the power of the wall carry. That this just He's a scary guy, right? He is Gorilla Grodd. I mean, look at that. Look at that face. Um, that and angry face. With all that big spiky armor as well. Oof. I mean, Atrocitus is kind of pointy himself. Yeah, a lot of jagged edges. You know what I mean? Atrocitus. Sharp edges. He'd be good at like cutting paper, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, if you're trying to like, open those, those, those like plastic packets hey, look, with like scissors and if stuff. If you're going to be talking shaver, about shredding up paper, he literally has a cat as his ally. Good point. Rip it you up. You just got to make sure that it's important paper and next I will be all over it. Urinate all over it. That's what cats do, isn't it? Oh, dear. I know, right? Begin. Used to have cats, so I know the, the, the Ooh, struggles. That it, oh, the miss. Now, what I would be very worried about is the fact that we're on Gorilla City and it's time for Nude Grodd to join the party. Oh, he is in his, 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 his comfortable environment. If you've seen all the disgusting tech videos from Omega, it's always from Gorilla City. And there we go. Another full combo. Oh, What's the setup? Time. Vortex! All in front. Magus really likes blocking in front on those. He does. It's almost like he's just dedicating to an option, right? Yeah. I actually think he's yet to block a... No, he has to be. He's blocked a few cross-ups. I'm going to say maybe he has just committed to it. I'm just going to block forward every time. Now, when, when it comes to the out, the anyway. wake-up becomes a little bit more obvious. Spending every ounce of his resources, but the charge takes a long time, and that's going to use up next start. Yeah, man, it's pressing buttons. Maybe expecting a wake up bait, but he has to get something done. Yeah, just sitting there and block the forward two from that range, but looking good for now. Oh! Oh, wow. Well, that's actually quite a good situation if you get tagged by that forward two to not end up getting huddled. Oh, and there we go. I wonder if that was almost like an OS against the uh, air tech. I feel like it was definitely a read. You know, he was absolutely expecting the air tech. So that's what the jump chase down was. Plenty of deck star left, though. This could definitely be Mattis's game. Doesn't get the restand. Unfortunately, against Garage, you, know, you really got to make sure you're you're taking away as much momentum as possible for him. Oh, that's going to be a block. Tries to punish for the down one. Commits to the puddle. Matt, this must have been convinced that was going to be a clean punish, but did not get it. Oh, tries to go for the delayed, the late jump three for the loops, but unfortunately with that drop. The issue with Grodd is a lot of his combo drops result in him actually getting hit. So even though he's a really execution heavy character, there is no room for mistake. And he actually tried to power through the push block attempt. That is something Atrocitus can do. There's a push block again. Try to get that distance and up. Oh, that block on the low from the other side. Man, let's keep himself as careful. Oh, 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 yeah, that's oh. going to do enough damage for sure. So it's three games to four, I'm man. This versus Omega. I think it's good. If you're going to be able to, if you're going to be able to take a stage off Omega, I feel like taking Gorilla City off him is a really good call. I mean, to be fair, it's not like they have the, the choice. It's competitive King of the Hill. It puts them back to character select on a random stage every time. <laughs> the only chance they'll get the same stage twice is if the game is just like, yep, yeah, let's just put them back on it again. I can't see uh, links in chat, Arm Devil, unfortunately. Um, so you have to just sort of let me know in chat what the video actually is, and I'll watch it later. Begin. But 3-4, it's going good. I feel like Omega definitely need, needed time to warm up. Uh, Grodd's going to be one of those characters that you need to get back into your flow. There we go, there's the ground pound. I actually think that might be plus, that, that ground pound leap. I'm not sure exactly how much, but it's definitely not something you can just dash or move out of. Ooh, down one, into the puddle. Oh, that's going to be a clean punish. punish, yeah. Keeps him in the corner too, doesn't want to commit too hard, but that's going to be a nice reset too. He can spend the bar, he will. There's a restand again. 
going for that pressure. Oh, we're set up this time and that's going to be a down one, but again, Mantis didn't turn it into too much. Instant jump three, probably either expecting an anti-air or wanting to go in front. A good trade for Omega because he's kept Mantis in the corner for now. Here's that shield, he's just trying to wait it out, but that's going to be a part of Omega really needs to start watching out for those. He's going to start that regeneration on that trait. Oh, there's the anti-air. Now he's probably not going to get the round on this, you know, because the anti-airs were down two. Down twos do cause combos to scale quite, you know, aggressively. He's not dead, but the cat is going to be back. Now does he try and use Dexter to finish the life, or does he save it for the next bar? Oh, oh grab! You know why the grab was such a good idea there? Was because he knew that if he's stuck in the animation time, he's going to have to sit there and hold something. Knowing Madness was going to sit there and block because he was minus, Omega called that bluff and went in for the grab. Very, very smart. And that's that stampede again, just reading that Madness is going to move around. They do the job. The secret sweep, really keeping him in check. Or tries to whiff punish, but tries to go for the optimal whiff punish, which is a little bit slower than he needs to. Now again, that sweep just going under that breath. Oh, we tried yeah. to whiff punish, but no. A little bit too late again. But Madness now has that space. If he wants to get the cat out, he can try, but you have to be careful. We know Omega's been quite unpredictable. And there we go, safe activation. I mean, like, it, it, it almost seems, it's definitely safer for Atrocitus to call trait in that situation because of stuff like that. Like, it is so much safer for Atrocitus to call his trait at that range than Omega, purely because, you know, the full screen threat comes from Atrocitus and his low punch. Whereas Grodd, if he gets a leap, yes, but it's so easy to anti-air that, it's not particularly in his favour, but those secret sweeps, they're doing a good job of just doing that health bit by bit, he's got to watch out. Now, I like that, he uses the blocked puddle to get his trait out, because look at that, all of a sudden the cat doesn't do anything. There you go, the armor's wore off. Oh, and he walks straight into a full string. Can't afford to clash, he has nowhere near enough bar to win. Trying to jump out of the run count. That's what you can do if he expects you to try and interrupt. That's going to be a full one. Unclashable, no, he walks forward first. Oh, the challenge! He's still going to survive, but he's got to watch out. This is a read, what does he do? He does, oh! But man, this gets hit, is that going to do enough? Not yet. No, no, no. Oh, 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 Omega running full speed right into Madness's big red face. I mean, that, that, that was one of those big call-out wins, right? Where it's like, you know this this wake-up is a problem. This, this wake-up is something you have to respect. Do you block it or do you try and pressure? Do you crouch? But if he knows I'm going to crouch, what if he just wake up forward two? What if he wake up backdash? What if he goes full screen? I don't want him to be full screen. Well, it's one of those situations you have not a lot of time at all, but you have a big decision to make. But that's going to put Omega K 5-3, so half of the work is now done for Omega, but I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes down to the wire as well, considering. Begin. Oh, instant jump two, not entirely sure what he was after there. probably just a big, a big read on something. Maybe expecting that 4-2, might have made it whiff, maybe got a punish for it, who knows, but it wasn't meant to be. It's been another throw, but that is going to put Atrocitus in that corner. Not as scary when you're not a gadget character, so not as much to worry about. Oh, uh, instant jump You know one. what? I thought that was a really good call, because he knew the leap was coming, and that was the instant jump one. Very, very good read from Mantis. That worked out. Oh, the shield didn't quite work out. That's going to be it gone. And the armor plowing straight through the multiple hits he can absorb. Oh, instant jump again, Mantis. Really trying to find other options now. That's going to be an easy whiff punish. The full string whiffed. Gonna get a knockdown. Opting not to use the meter burn. Ah, the wake up down one. I mean, I kind of, ex you know, you expect in that situation someone's gonna press a button. You know, they haven't got health to work with anyway. You sit there and block, you'll die anyway. Better to try and get something going. He's gonna spend the bar. He's gonna get a full combo here. Oh, he drops the combo, unfortunately. Misses a lot of damage on the table. Trying to fake him out. Does he go for the ground pound? No, he doesn't. He's trying to bait him and doing something. It's enforcing a lot of respect from Madness, who I think realistically he is just gonna wait out. But there is the leap into a full combo. Here comes Omega. Oof, delay wake up from Mantis, but still, gonna take some damage. Omega's even things out quite nicely, to be honest, but has to be careful, but Mantis, forward dashing straight into the stampede. Don't think he was ready for that. This even situation, probably leaping on anticipation of a Dexter call, but it's that down one. Really popular tool from Atrocitus players is that breath on block into another down one, because it's so quick. Point blank activation. Oh, wow, the environment completely messes. And that's gonna be a full combo, but no confirm from Mantis, very surprising. It's looking kind of bad for Omega. Oh, nice, good read. And there's a meter burn for the unair techable and increased damage. 
Yeah. Oh. There we go. Very clean final round for Irish Man. It's right there. No, it's looking good. I mean, that really is what you can do if you get someone back to the wall. They don't have an escape option there because obviously you know, you're, you're leaving them in a situation that they can't use a reversal and there's no environment there because obviously it had missed before. But I also love that option though for Madness. So, uh, the I one time Mega had an opportunity to get out was with that, that interaction with really the coin, the big tank. And Madness knew that if I'm point blank, it's not going to hit. You saw the patience. He didn't even flinch when he went for it. He knew it wasn't going to hit. But now moving down to the back cave. This is the one that doesn't have the... Um, this is the one that doesn't have the background bounce, but Grod does get some crazy... I mean, are they guaranteed gra a command grab resets on the left-hand side? I'm sure they're, they're, I'm sure they're, they're guaranteed, or at least it's a mix-up, but he gets heavy damage. But no, he's not going to get the chance to do as we already transition. I don't think that's ideally what the legendary want. He's going to get good damage at the very least, but he's definitely nothing got. compared to what you'd get with yeah. that grab reset. He had got a lot more damage from setup, that's for sure. But now, with the access to background bounce, at the end of the day, Grod really really likes those background bounces. But there is that tank in the background too, but no messing around. A wake up punch float. Oh wow, does he go for the cat? Goes to the lift instead, that really is the mix up. Is it going to be cat call or puddle? More pressure coming through. Next star, the mix up that's not a mix up, but still seems like one because of the <laughs> sheer amount of lows he can throw out. There's that reading that wake up stampede, getting chewed up for free in a mega. Losing a lot of life very quickly now. But there's that patience from Manish. He, he has it, so much respect has been enforced for that full screen leap that in the neutral, he truly is just sitting there and waiting for it. Here comes a cancel. And, you know, with so many games in, Omega is still consistently landing those cancels on a regular basis. Not easy to do. And to be honest, I'm surprised his hands aren't hurting to the point of not being able to do them this far in. There we go. That leap a little bit too slow. Can't do it on reaction. Has to be a read. Ooh. Omega's going to know that anything. Yep. Cat energy ball is going to do enough damage for trait sure. or no trait. Oh, straight into the lead, but it makes himself a little bit too obvious. And I actually kind of feel like Omega is almost like falling back into what we were seeing earlier in the set, where he's just doing leap after leap after leap. Even if he doesn't get anti aired, he's putting himself so minus. All Madness needs to do is just sit there and wait, and he's going to get given his turn on a silver plate to press a button. It can be attractive to go for those leaps though, because Rod can make a big difference. All it takes is one opening, right? If, you, if, if, if it's like this, any hit now could go into potential Vortex. If he has the bar, it could go into huge damage output. So it's quite, not necessarily easy to make a comeback, but it's very possible. But it comes off those big hits. But man, as like you said, he's not being scared. He is sitting there patiently waiting for them because he knows Omega needs to do something. He, he needs to get damage on the table or he's going to lose. Tries to dedicate the background bounce, but to be honest, at this health, it's likely to go down to 5-5. Five, five. Pressing a lot of advantage. He's got the meter burn as well, and that's going to be game over. Guaranteed. Meter burn. Breath. And it's 5-5 five, five so far. Looking good, I have to say. Atrocitus wins. Yeah, 5-5. Five, five. I mean, we're, we are dead even halfway through. This is, at the very least, I mean, not. I guess maybe not the halfway point, right? Because we could go down to 10-9, but who knows? Could I, be I the think, halfway point. I think a big part of this is, like you said, I, I think when Omega's not playing from... When he's playing from behind, you definitely seem to be a little bit more in a hurry to get that big hit to you know, even things out. And Mantis, on, on the other hand, when Mantis has a life lead, he is a brick wall. And it seems incredibly hard to open him up because he has no reason to, to, to flinch. He has no reason to get... You know, any kind of uncomfortable. It's kind of like it's kind of like what Zoro was saying in the chat. Um, in this matchup, Grod definitely kind of needs to take the risks. You know, he's definitely the one that needs to get the call on on things like that. You know, when to go in for the leap. Grod combos uh, again. I think Omega might have thought he was a bit further away for that to actually background bounce. But this is going to waste Dexter time, so it's a little bit of a win anyway. Yeah, it's not too bad. There's going to be a statue too. Oh. That was actually, uh, it's a one-time use, but very smart for Mega. And that's going to be a full combo with Punish. Vortex. Or oh, one that's going to be another other one. Other side. Guess. Gets the other side. Does he even need to engage a guess here? Here comes one more setup. Tried to secret sweep to keep things safer. The cancel. And to be honest, yeah, it's been a good round for him, but I would like to see them cash out damage. And that's going to be armoured through, but the ball is going to accept it. Again, I... I actually don't really quite understand why he's getting hit by so many of those raw puddles, to be honest. And especially this many games into the series, you should definitely be blocking those by now and at least looking out for them. Meteor burn for extra chip, but that punch float's going to be a guaranteed punish. The charge actually, you know, it's not safe on block, which is why the cancels are so risky. No, it's a normal stampede is punishable, but I believe meteor burn stampede is actually plus. It's going to be enough at the very least for the back forward one. So if it was off meteor burn, Omega might have pressed a button either way. He gets the first round, but after such a good start, probably should have gone into it with a bit more health. Well, he's going to be happy he's at least took the life bar, but 
Again, there's that breath usage again. Or oh, tries to whiff punish, but the string finishes him off anyway. That's going to be a, a nice, calm and calculated anti-air. But Mantis has a couple of interactables behind him too. Oof. And that preemptive boot from there gets chewed up. Now there's that forward two into low puddle again. Even though it's forward two, two low puddles, the mix up. Some people, you know, they can let go of blocking low a little bit too early. And that's why it works out. Oh, you get that stampede chewing up, but the problem is Omega's losing so much life here. Only four bars. Goes in for the low, and wow, he meter burns it. No, drops the back three! I'm actually very surprised that missed. Look, it went straight through. I'm actually really surprised that didn't work, to be honest with you. Oh, this is a very ex strange exchange. Is that jumping with that patience again from Irish Man? He has no reason to, to, to not be calm here. Has the push block, and that's likely to be game over, and it is Manis going up in the set again. You know, it's been a while since he went up there, but he's finally managed to secure it. I think he's looking a lot more comfortable now, I think. You, know, you, uh, you said earlier on that Omega K kind of <coughs> had time to warm up, but I think Manis was a little bit, I suppose, in the same boat only when it came to adjusting to the matchup itself, because this is definitely something that Atrocitus doesn't need to, it is like you said, he doesn't take a huge amount of risks necessarily, but ultimately he, he is in danger sometimes. You know, if, if, if he happens to leap right as you do something, then he can get that big hit and he can do that huge amount of damage, but ultimately, if you have a life lead, you have no reason to do those attacks anyway. And if he ends up going for a leap, you're just gonna punish it. Yeah, he's, a, he's so much more open to just go for those low puddle checks. The second deck star comes into play, you know, because that, that risk is eliminated when you've got the cat available and there's the back dash. Manus, he's making some good reads on these stampede cancels. There's another cancel, but goes into the background bounce. He's going to commit to that down one regardless. And the cat's here, so again, like you said, going for that puddle. As soon as the cat is out the bag, he is ready to establish that threat. That's going to use up the deck star times. The cat has disappeared for now. Oh, that'd be a big whiff punish. Omega committing very heavily to these options. That's going to be a full combo again for Manis. Well, no, drops the end. Yeah, he drops the 2 2. He's really looking for that hit, but again, there's no reason for Mantis to do anything hasty. You know, Omega needs that hit because he needs to even things out, but ultimately, Mantis has no reason to press a button to put himself in danger of getting hit by it. He jumps through, but too high up. Big block, very smart from Mantis. Good defense. Yeah, really impressive block, actually. That went to the, la the other side at the very last minute. Oh, and that's going to be a full punish. But no, yeah, the meter burn doesn't work out because he is currently still in his projectile immunity. So it did save him at the very least, but... And there we go. He's got Dexter blocking that low puddle is not going to allow you to leap anyway because you're just going to leap straight into the shield. It kind of looked hard for Omega to really approach this matchup so far. It's one of those matchups where the second you land that hit, you almost need to absolutely make sure that you've won the round on that one touch. You, know, you can't give Atrocitus this room to get back into neutral and get Dexter called back again because it just puts you straight back into that disadvantaged situation that you don't want to deal with. Now that's going to be a full whiff punish. Probably going to be enough health for the first life bar, but this is dangerous territory. The closer Dex gets to being back up again. It's a lot of damage. It's hard to avoid. Oh. Unfortunately, with Dexter, all he has to do now is pop Blood Siphon, Meter Burn Roll, and yeah, another hard situation. Yeah, as soon as his back was to the wall, that was going to be game over. Very little to do in that situation. And a good turnaround, Banner. It's going up seven games to five. Okay, did have the lead in this earlier on, but he's definitely starting to pull ahead now. He's got a grasp on the neutral. Like, he really, really has a strong grasp on how to approach this neutral now. And he's making it very difficult for Omega to advance, you know. And when he finally does advance, his defense on these setups and on these mix-ups is getting a lot better, which is making it harder for Omega to loop damage into more damage into more damage. But then on the flip side, it does look like Omega's having a much harder time defending against... I suppose sort of like standard fuzzies. I'm not talking about like, you know, the, the old mix-up between the forward two and the low puddle. I mean like stuff like, uh, you know, just just, just where, where lows happen to be in the middle of strings. Omega seems to be getting caught off guard by them quite a lot. So I'm not sure if it's him trying to interrupt or trying to make a read that Madness is going to stop or if he is just getting opened up by them, but I think he just needs to be a little bit more patient. There's that forward two mix up, you know, as long as Dexstar's in play or whatever, even without Dexstar, that's always a risk, you know, forward two two, low puddle, forward two two three. The raw back three, I'm not sure if that was there without the meter burn, but he will take it. Big damage 400. Oh, kept him in the air just a little bit long enough, and then 
Again, these low puddles, I'd really like to see him just blocking these puddles. There's no mix up here, he's just getting caught. But for us, it's not just the damage, right? He's obviously losing a lot of life to the puddles, but it's also giving Mantis free, free cat summons, and that really isn't something you can let Atrocitus get hold of. And he wasn't getting hit by anywhere near as many of these early on. I think that's a big thing that's letting him down so far, is the amount of puddles he's just getting hit by. Tries to probably down one charge for the chip, but doesn't quite work out. I love the Ooh, cancel! I, I expected it. some kind of whiff. I love the cancel. Oh, nice. I mean, it was a good way of just getting rid of that last kind of couple of percent he had left. Oof, oh, big boy damage. And because he here. had the uh, immunity, Dexter didn't do anything. Vortex. Vortex. Oh, oh, crab! That's the third way. And that's going to be an early clash. Absolutely worth it. Going to get some of that life back. Undo some of that damage. Only one bar spent. I agree with that, though. You know, he has such, such an unbeatable advantage here. Oh, no, Mr. Cancel. Still gets a little bit of damage. That was a accidental reset, but we'll take it. A little bit preemptive with the Meteor Burn back three, though. You know, dropping a combo doing Meteor Burn, they're probably not going to press the button there. Still a huge life lead for Mega now. There's the cat. Tries to react to the Stampede, but can't get close enough. And another puddle. I mean, really is starting to be a huge problem. This is where things get scary. Oh, no. Here we go. In a very short space of time, Mountainous is going to steal this lead away in fast manner. And that's what he's looking for, looking for that time to get that stampede out. Right, this is close. Oh, the delay, wake up. And the cat again. Oh no, just caught! But Manus didn't actually confirm off that one. There's the block, no. The overhead. Oh, and the stampede again! It's like... It's like that is, that is basically uh, Omega's favourite way to get out of pressure, right? Is the stampede. But he doesn't do it immediately. There's always like a slight gap between when he can do stampede and when he chooses to do stampede. You know what I mean? And it's c consistently catching out Mantis. Like as soon as he's like, right, he could have stampeded there and he didn't. He did it. Like, he's still sitting there blocking. So now I'm going to move and impress something. That's when he stampedes. And it's hit. It's working consistently. One game away, it'll tie things up though. You know, that, that's what you have to forget. It, or can't figure out, I suppose. Madness, he's been looking so strong, he's been looking so dominant, but at the end of the day, he was winning game after game, but he was so many games down that all Omega has to do is win one more match, and he's going to tie things up in this first attempt. And another puddle hitting. That's going to put things not the way Omega wants them to be, for sure. Back to the corner already now. Again, getting tagged by low laser. Yeah, he's going to get caught by... He was going to get caught by one more rep before the trait inevitably ran out. There's a block. Oh, oh. a counter poke with a big punch. There's a lot to go for a full combo though. I kind of feel like, you know, that late back two was probably not 100% something that Omega expected. So that late back two probably maybe tried to cancel into leap, but just couldn't get the timing down at the last minute. That's going to be safe going for the shield. Good block on the overhead, but can't press buttons because the shield comes out. And he's going to get one more. Oh. And get obviously go for his only bar on the stampede, Ryan, but get some damage on the table. Oh, you're on TV. Oh, big wow. whiff from Mantis. He just built the bar he needed. But no! He dropped, they dropped the down two into trait and that just sucks. got raw trait. When, when, when you, you do the hard bit, which is the read, and you get the whiff punish, which is the hard bit to time, and then you mess up the combo that you've practiced a hundred times. You hate to see that kind of thing happen, but that's what happened to Omega just now. And now Mantis looking dominating. I mean, that's a huge thing. And those 1-1-1s, one, one, ones, they're so scary because at any point you try and tech a grab, you're likely to try and press a button and that 1-1-1 one, one, one will just eat you for breakfast. And Clean punish. The punish. Yeah. Has no choice but to go for a stampede. That would have been enough damage to kill. He had three bars ready. He's probably going to take some damage here, guaranteed. But at the very least, he won't take a four. Oh, no, he doesn't spend anything. He's looking for that big boy comeback. I mean, he, he, he can start it here, but is he going to have to get one more hit? Oh, the problem is all Manus has to do here is pop Blood Siphon. Just, just go down back three. He can, he can win on just the Blood Siphon alone. And oh, yeah, doesn't even yeah. need to. The reaction immediate up breath. Eight win. games for Manus versus six for Omega. Still pretty close in terms of numbers, but Manus is definitely starting to run away with the set. He's definitely looking for. Um, 
it's 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 a weird one because Mantis definitely seems to be much more prone to using whenever he's got decks up. He's he's way more prone to using it for just general pressure, like stuff that he knows you can block because he wants you to to get to get hit by something. He's going for the mix the mix up that isn't the mix up, right? Like because you know there are other options, you will usually get hit by them. But he's not really committing to anything like that. This the biggest problem he's got right now, Omega, is these these puddles. Like he is just straight up getting hit by way too many of them. It's almost like he's, uh, he's, he's taking the momentum away from himself because of it. But we've seen what happens once he's able to get going, right? You know, once he lands that hit, he does so much damage. Whoa. Oh, wow, there's the reaction meter burn back three. He spends the bar, so he's going to get a mix up here. And there's that throw bait. Oh, but walks straight into the big hand. I don't think <laughs> I actually don't think Matt is expected to get hit by that jump into that range. Or oh, whatever, so just just slow enough for that not to work. And you get the conversion. I wonder if he's gonna kill. Not quite. <laughs> oh! Oh, Wait a minute! Infinite, no, infinite. The, infinite, the infinite combos! Infinite combos! Disclaimer, that is not an infinite. That is just the Omega K special. Uh oh. Here we go. Guaranteed Dexar leap out of the corner. Oh no, I think he tried to down two! Unfortunately, he's in a big amount of danger here. Oh, and the blocks too. Like, Madness is making himself very hard to open up to. No, absolutely. And he catches the jump out. Doesn't even need to spend the bar. That's going to be the life gone. Right. I mean, like, the thing is, you always ask yourself, you know, God has all of this mix. He has all this vortex stuff. How can this character struggle in certain areas? But if you are able to just straight up... Oh, oh no, it that missed! That was so unfortunate that it wasn't in range. That was like... On just the absolute brink. Oh, but tries to anti but does so late. He's got. To, he's got to make something happen with this. He has to. Oh, wait, what? Oh, oh, that's one way out of it. That's definitely a that's unique one very way. expensive way out of it that you definitely won't have every time. But it will do. It will do there. In that one situation where super is enough to win the matchup, Madness goes. You know what? Screw this. <laughs> Well, I mean, I respect the attempt, you know, Mega went for a really tricky, really specific... I mean, that setup, that, that is, that setup is very difficult to, to, to react to the side it's going to hit you on. But if you have super, and it's armoured, then Atrocities. by all means, be my guest. Now, does he go naked grod or armoured grod? Armoured grod! He's betting the farm... Now, he gets a background bounce! He does get Fortress of Solitude, so the background bounce is likely to help him here. But the problem is, we've said it time after time after time, it's that neutral. The fact that Atrocitus is able to really play an extremely reactive game. That's a very red grod, uh, Atrocitus. How not... the vibrant that red is. On uh, Dexstar as well. I have, I have to say, I'm very impressed. But to be honest, you know, it's how much of a reactive game Atrocitus is able to play against grod. And Omega, unfortunately, now he's just getting opened up by the classic forward 2 2 3 50 50. Or he tries to chase it down, doesn't quite. Down one into background bounce again. Oh, that one connects. Oh, the air tech. Or oh, could have been it again. That's going to be a confirm that time. No commitment. He's going to get Vortex. Confirm. He's going to get Vortex off. What this. is it? Oh. oh, the back dash. That was like the one thing he could have done out of that setup. But the thing is, you may go, wow, Irish Madness, he gets out of that a lot. But if, if Omega did anything else other than early jump two to land in front, the backdash would not have worked. Madness is going for these hard dedications. And most of the time they're working. Like, it just comes down to his guessability here is just really good. I mean, they, Vortex is Vortex, but if you guess the if you guess the option, you are going to get out of it. But that's just what makes it so scary. You have to guess. You don't have a choice. He's going to get the conversion. See what he can take here. Oh, had already gone for a down two, so he's not going to get a full confirm. There we oh, go. There's the armor going through. Omega K. I mean, man, this is on match point, but this is definitely not guaranteed win life. Right. Now this is match point for Mantis. Uh oh. But he can't meter burn it because the uh, meter burn version is immune. Oh, oh big punch, chunky. Now, if he gets opened up again, which he does, we're likely to see a clash here. Oh, he spends the bar. 
No clash. Oh, waits, waits until for the last Omega minute. to be in the corner. That was really smart. He decided to trade out some of that life to make sure that Omega's going to be in the corner when he's done. Now things are dangerous. Yeah, this is oh, very scary. and it's an unchallenged call. But he gets out, uses the leap just to get out. Oh, throws him back to the corner he'll, also. He'll take the grab though, because it's going to use up so much Dexstar time. And there we go. Now Dexstar is gone for probably the entirety of this round. But Omega doesn't have any bar. He's going to have to be really careful now. Any hit will be able to do a lot of damage, but he hasn't got any meter. There it is. Oh, and he finally finds the opening, but... Oh, no, the 50-50. That was the forward one 50, 50 That was overhead on low. Oh, the preemptive back three. But that's going to be it. He's that could up. be the damage. Is that going to be enough? He's going to get a restand at the end of this. <gasps> no! Oh, no! Drop. Omega with the drop at the end. I wonder if he was trying to go for down one into Stampede. I can only assume he tried to do down one into some kind of special, but just got the down one. It still wouldn't have killed, but it wouldn't have put Madness in that situation to at least get the... Um, the distance to get the interactable, which is ultimately what he needed at the end of the day. Well played to the guys. No, good set. Good set, Irish Madness will much. win. Irish Madness walks away with that one. But that was a good that was a good fight. That was a good fight. Unfortunately, coming down to a combo drop is kind of, you know, it's something that Omega has had a hard time with. Yeah, it happens. Consistently yeah, I mean, it, 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 but I mean, it happens, it's kind of crazy how he drops the combo, but he did the ridiculous cancels before. He got four reps in a row of those cancels before, but dropped the combo at the end. I mean, like, your hands can only take so much. Do you know what I mean? But that is what it is. Good set. We have one more left to go. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much for playing in that. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. We're going to get into our next series 